AMD drops a bombshell on their next gen CPUs and GPUs. Oh my goodness, they're really good. YouTube oh, is testing out a feature that makes me a little mad. And we've got a 3080 Ti laptop to look at. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And just uh, so you know, towards the end of the episode of hot news, there's gonna be a little housekeeping that I wanna discuss with y'all. So just stick tuned to the end or skip there now, I guess. And ignore the rest of the episode because you're not here for tech news. You're here for me, right? Is that how this works? No, it's not. You're here for AMD CPUs and GPUs, all right? We got exciting new details from AMD directly at their accelerated data center event thing that they did yesterday where they unveiled their Zen 4C CPUs, their MI200 GPUs, which have a whole bunch of technology that you're looking forward to, as well as some details on 3D vCache chips that should be debuting sometime soon. So let's talk about Zen 4, which is a 128 core CPU. The rumors that were floating out there being justified by Lisa Su herself, showing off that while the initial Zen 4 setup might have 96 cores with all of the DDR5 and PCI Express 5.0 that you could possibly want, the one that comes after that will have up to 128 cores, AMD not stopping anywhere, and they're actually gonna call it Zen 4C architecture with the C standing for cloud. So slightly different, AMD continuing to push forward with that, showing off that it's gonna have Zen 4 core optimized for scale out performance on the cloud, significantly improved power efficiency and density optimized cache hierarchy. Big deals coming from Zen 4. Also showing off that it will have two times the power density, two times the power efficiency and over 1.25 times the performance. Obviously this is not the gaming chip that they're necessarily aiming for, but rather the ones that are gonna be unveiled into a bunch of data centers, which actually do require a lot more power efficiency and just space density because the more cores you can pack in the fewer space means the less cooling that you need, which will lower your builds overall, not just on the PC build that you're making for that. Also getting shown off are the 3D vCache versions of current generation of AMD Epic chips. The Milan X is now official with up to 768 megabytes of L3 cache or a total of 804 megabytes of cache per socket. That means you can get up to 1.6 gigabytes of total cache between two CPUs if you're running a dual socket setup. It's absolutely crazy. AMD showing off three times the L3 vCache up to the 64 Zen 3 cores that you've come to expect, as well as pointing out some data sets such as 50% average uplift across targeted workloads that can actually benefit from this L3 cache improvement and that it will be launching in Q1 of 2022 and that they're doing this by updating a bunch of the technology with higher interconnect densities and interconnect efficiencies. So there are the Epic chips that will have this new 3D V cache that can be up to 50% faster in targeted workloads, which harkens really well for us mainstream consumers when it comes to gaming, obviously AMD has already said that this should probably perform in the realm of about 15% faster in video games. The targeted workloads not so much applying to video games, but without an architecture change, AMD implementing this and just kind of knocking it out of the park with this type of performance, Intel could be very much dead in the water when we potentially get the 3D vCache versions of regular consumer chips this coming January, as we're expecting them to roll out, although AMD hasn't confirmed that timeline for the average consumer consumer, but they did confirm that they're gonna be putting Epic chips into Facebook and Microsoft servers, which helped to bolster AMD stock price, but big companies using big companies to do big company stuff. And now let's talk about some big GPU details. AMD not just showing off their CPU stuff, Zen 4, all right, 3D vCache, that's all well and good. Let's also talk about their behemoth of an MI200 GPU based on the CDNA2 architecture. Absolutely crazy, beating NVIDIA's top slot a GPU by the tune of up to five times depending on the workload. So this is gonna be the first time we have the multi-chip module that we've been expecting. The two CDNA2 dies, which use Infinity Fabric to communicate with each other and has eight stacks of HBM2E and it's called AMD's Instinct MI200 series GPU. It has peak performance in so much. FP64 vector, five times what NVIDIA is putting out. FP32 vector, two and a half times. FP64 matrix, 4.9 times, absolutely destroying NVIDIA in specific workloads. I just wanna point out for a second that the MI100, the previous generation to this, was the first GPU to have FP64 vector performance above 10 teraflops. This one is nearly quintupling that at 47.9, and AMD coming out with a real breakthrough when it comes to the MI200. Now, there are some workloads that NVIDIA's A100 is gonna make a lot more sense in, but it does seem like the MI200 is a huge huge 
winner for them, including the fact that it's gonna have 3.2 terabytes per second of memory bandwidth. However, it's gonna come at a TDP cost of 560 watts, whereas the A100 is significantly less than that. So it does seem like AMD is making huge generational leap over leap over leap improvements when it comes to their cloud-based and infrastructure-based setups that they're releasing to their enterprise consumers. And I think this bodes really well for us mainstream consumers for what could be coming down the pipeline. However, as has been indicated by AMD's current generation of Ryzen chips, they're also more than willing to raise the price on you in order to make sure that you know that you can only go to them. I'm really excited for the future, but this could also continue just the wavelength of us getting increased prices on everything that's coming out. But with all this coming out, are you excited for AMD's next gen consumer desktop stuff? Let me know down below in the comments while I let you know about crypto stocks, all right? Bitcoin up 5% in the last 24 hours to be up to 66 thousand dollars which is pretty good seven hundred dollars off of its all-time high right now ethereum also flying pretty gosh dang high sitting at 47.81 just 13 dollars off of its all-time high dogecoin also up 4.6 percent to sit at 27 cents gamestop closing up yesterday at 2.53 percent to close at 218.64 continuing its streak from last week and amc also increasing 8.23 percent the surge of crypto and meme stocks seem to be in lockstep step right now going hand in hand with each other and people's money went out of their hand and into the hands of Ford we talked about in last week's episode of hot news how Ford was releasing crate EV motors out of their Mustang Mach-E so that people could do their own conversion kits with it and they're completely sold out with no ETA one that's coming back and Rivian selling out to other companies because their electric van platform which is exclusive to Amazon right now they've announced that they'll start shipping out to other companies that possibly want it in 2023 Rivian's going public this week so they're trying to get all this data out there now so that people get hyped up about it. But I think this is probably one of the reasons why I support them as a platform because they're trying to just do something a little bit different than Tesla is. Whereas Tesla, you know, sold the car that was high margin, trying to get that to bankroll into a more low margin car, but that was still pretty premium that they could bankroll into the kind of the every car, which is the Model 3, and then bankroll that into an even more affordable car. That's kind of their pipeline. Lucid's kind of doing a very similar thing when it comes to the air. They're trying to make sure that they're just getting a whole bunch of cash and margin to make that happen. Rivian seems to be going the commercial route, just selling out to Amazon and Ford and having them bankroll their operation so that they can get their R1T, R1S set up. I think I'm excited for the future of electric car companies that are just being built from the ground up here right now. And I'm excited for Rivian's future. And you should be excited for OneDrive's future because it's gonna be without Windows 7, Windows 8 as of March 1st, 2022. So if you're using those things together, stop it. Time's up, all right? And time's up for you Disney Plus people watching Marvel movies in the regular 16 by nine aspect ratio. Peasant crap, all right, you should be watching it in IMAX. Disney Plus, as of November 12th, will be releasing Marvel movies in IMAX, at least a select amount of Marvel movies that you can watch in the IMAX format in case you wanna have black bars all over your screen because no the commercial TV out there is regularly supporting IMAX format, but you can now do it in case you enjoy it just having that aspect ratio. And in case you like the vertical aspect ratio, YouTube has shorts, okay? You can watch short 60 second vertical format videos, but they're rolling out a test right now, which kind of ticks me off a little bit. And I kind of want to get your input on this, but they're announcing that there's a test that if you reopen the YouTube mobile app, it will take you directly to shorts instead of your home feed. Now this is only going to apply to people who last closed out the app when they were still in shorts. But number one, this bugs me as a consumer of YouTube videos. If I somehow am watching YouTube shorts, Shorts videos, all right? I typically am not going to YouTube for shorts content. I don't care how good it is. I will go to TikTok or Instagram Reels for that, not for YouTube. YouTube provides something else for me. And then as a creator, I feel like this short changes a whole lot of creators who are making long form video content like we are, where the, I mean, the simple solution here, YouTube, is to make your own damn app for YouTube shorts instead of trying to pile drive everything into one seamless ecosystem, which you have not managed to do for either live stream with your comp competition with Twitch or with the short format videos for your competition with TikTok, you're not doing anything well. And so trying to push it all together and then forcing these uh, diversifications within your own ecosystem, is going to lead to some really weird issues with you not supporting creators because you're chasing trends on what's the hottest thing to do right now. And I just, 
I don't agree with that. I don't think that there's anything inherently good about YouTube Shorts that would force people to want to go there inherently over it. Are you one of the people who do want that? Do you want YouTube to open up to your Shorts tab because that's what you come to YouTube for? Or do you want to have the choice to switch over to Shorts? Or do you think that YouTube shouldn't have Shorts to begin with? Sound, sound off on all of that down below in the comments. And we can sound off on Intel's DDR4 support because there's some reports previously that Raptor Lake might not support DDR4, which means if you're upgrading to an Alder Lake chip right now, you have to get Z690, but you bought a DDR4 board so that you wouldn't have to buy new RAM. Well, then if you want to upgrade to Rocket Lake, you could support it on your socket, but you couldn't support it on your RAM, at least according to previous reports. The latest report from Moore's Law is dead is that won't be true. DDR4 on Raptor Lake next year, whenever that comes out, will be totally fine, but you'll be on AMD, so who cares? But will you be on AMD when it comes to mobile GPUs? There's a new 3080 Ti benchmark popping up, showing off the highest Mac Daddy dedicated GPU. You might be able to get into a laptop, not much known about this right now. We're expecting a launch of this sometime in January, but showing off as 7,424 CUDA core, 16 gigabytes of VRAM at a 256 bit bus. This could be a pretty fast laptop. Would you like one of these? I want to hear from you down below. And that's going to end it for the news portion of this episode of Hot News. But now it's time to talk about the Hot News news portion, which is talking about the stuff going on here, which is we will be moving away from this channel completely as a of next Monday. There's some behind the scenes stuff that's kind of been going on, um, a lot of contemplation and data analysis to know whether or not moving forward with the Hot News channel is a good thing to do. And me, as well as my team, have come to the conclusion that we need to just not shut this channel down, but Hot News will now be featured back on UFD Tech rather than here on the Hot News channel, which I'll explain in a video over on UFD Tech in the next couple of weeks. So in order to get your daily dose of Hot News from Monday onwards, it's going to be over on UFD Tech rather than here. What we're going to be doing with this channel is a discussion that's still open and remains to be seen and having open communication with our Discord big brains who are helping us try to figure all of this out. But I appreciate all the support that you guys have shown shown us and this is not due to the fact that hotness is going away but rather there's needs to be some like company restructuring that's happening so with that being said i'm brett with the uh, hot news thing that i do here i'll see you tomorrow for breakfast my friends cheers